The goddess movement includes spiritual beliefs or practices chiefly neo-pagan which has emerged predominantly in North America, Western Europe, Australia, and New Zealand in the 1970s. The movement grew as a reaction to perceptions of predominant organized religion as male-dominated, and makes use of goddess worship and a focus on gender and femininity. The goddess movement is a widespread, non-centralized trend in neopaganism, and therefore has no centralized tenets of belief. Practices vary widely, from the name and number of goddesses worshipped to the specific rituals and rites used to do so. Some, such as Dianic Wicca, exclusively worship female deities, while others do not. Belief systems range from monotheistic to polytheism to pantheistic, encompassing a range of theological varieties similar to that in the broader neo-pagan community. Common pluralistic belief means that a self-identified goddess worshipper could theoretically worship any number of different goddesses from cultures all over the world. Based on its characteristics, the goddess movement is also referred to as a form of cultural religiosity that is increasingly diverse, geographically widespread, eclectic, and more dynamic in process. Terminology <inaudible> 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 Capitalization of terms such as goddess and goddesses usually vary with author or with the style guides of publications or publishers. Within the goddess community, members generally consider it proper to capitalize the word goddess, but not necessary when generic references are made, as in the word goddesses. Goddesses refers to a local or specific deities linked clearly to a particular culture and often to particular aspects, attributes and powers for example, the Mesopotamian goddess Inanna, Ishtar, Athena, or Hindu goddesses like Sarasvati, the goddess of learning, poetry, music, inspiration and wisdom, and Lakshmi goddess of wealth and sovereignty. One can regard a goddess in this sense as an aspect of the great goddess as well as a specific goddess with a particular role within a pantheon. The Hindu goddess, Durga, is a case in point. The name Durga can refer to a specific aspect of the goddess but in the Shakti forms of Hinduism generally refers to the great goddess as Adyashakti, the primordial Shakti who incorporates all aspects. Anthropologists in their studies of goddesses have noted that adherents of goddesses often view their own goddess as a personal guardian or teacher. The goddess or the great goddess is a female deity that is regarded as primary. Such a religious system existed historically in many cultures, though not under the same names and not necessarily with the same traits. If there is a male god, his powers may be seen as deriving from her. These terms are not usually understood to refer a single deity that is identical across cultures but rather a concept common in many ancient cultures, which those in the goddess movement want to restore. When goddess is spoken of as a personal guardian, as in, my goddess, it means, my worldview in goddess spirituality. Goddess spirituality is sometimes used as a synonym for goddess movement and sometimes as the spiritual practice that is part of the goddess movement. It could also refer to the goddess movement's ethos, particularly when used to construct Christianity as the diametrical opposite of the goddess. Here, the term becomes a distinguishing concept that sets the movement apart from Christianity with little room for overlap. Goddessing is a recent contribution to goddess vocabulary, possibly derived from the British journal of the same name, following from Mary Daly's linguistically suspect suggestion that deity is too dynamic, too much in process and changing continually, to be a noun, and should better be spoken as a verb Daly 1973. Goddessing may also mean goddess culture, goddess way of life, goddess practice, or my goddessing as in my individual interpretation and experience of goddess. Priestess refers to women who dedicate themselves to one or more goddesses. It may or may not include leadership of a group, and it may or may not include legal ordination. The analogous term for men is priest. However, not everyone who dedicates themselves to the goddess or goddesses calls themselves a priestess or priest. Theology is a term whose first use in the context of feminist analysis of religion and discussion of goddess is usually credited to Naomi Goldenberg, who used the term in her book Changing of the Gods. It substitutes the Greek feminine prefix, thea, for the supposedly generic use of the Greek masculine prefix, theo. 
frequently used to mean analysis of goddess thought and mysticism, it can also be used more liberally to mean any kind of divine, not just deity divine, as in meditation, ethics, ritual pragmatics. Topic. Background In the 19th century, some first-wave feminists such as Matilda Jocelyn Gage and Elizabeth Cady Stanton published their ideas describing a female deity, whilst anthropologists such as Johann Jakob Bachofen examined the ideas of prehistoric matriarchal goddess cultures. However, these ideas were largely ignored in the North America and much of Europe until second-wave feminism. In the 1960s and 1970s, feminists who became interested in the history of religion also refer to the work of Helen Diner 1965, whose book Mothers and Amazons, An Outline of Female Empires was first published in German in 1932, Mary Esther Harding 1935, the first significant Jungian psychoanalyst in the United States, Elizabeth Gould Davis 1971, and Merlin Stone 1976. Since the 1970s, goddess spirituality has emerged as a recognizable international cultural movement. In 1978 Carol P. Christ's widely reprinted essay, Why Women Need the Goddess, which argues in favor of the concept of there having been an ancient religion of a supreme goddess, was presented as the keynote address to an audience of over 500 at the Great Goddess Re-Emerging. Conference at the University of California, Santa Cruz, it was first published in Heresies, The Great Goddess Issue, 1978. Carol P. Christ also co-edited the classic feminist religion anthologies Weaving the Visions, New Patterns in Feminist Spirituality, 1989, and Woman Spirit Rising, 1979 the latter included her essay, Why Women Need the Goddess. From 1974 to 1984, Woman Spirit, a journal edited in Oregon by Jean and Ruth Mountaingrove, published articles, poetry, and rituals by women, exploring ideas and feelings about female deity. The journal The Beltane Papers, which started publication at about the same time until mid-2011. In 1983, Jade River and Linny Levy founded the Reformed Congregation of the Goddess, International RCGI, in Madison, Wisconsin. RCGI continues today with groups called circles in many U.S. localities, as well as an educational program, priestess training, and ordination. The goddess movement has found voice in various films and self-published media, such as the Women and Spirituality trilogy made by Donna Reed for the National Film Board of Canada. Topic. Use of mythological materials Topic. Participants in the goddess movement often invoke myths. However skeptics claim that these have been reconstructed from ancient sources and others are modern inventions. Indeed, these myths are not interpreted literally, but rather figuratively or metaphorically as reflecting ancient understandings and worldviews. For instance, creation myths are not seen as conflicting with scientific understanding but rather as being poetic, metaphoric statements that are compatible with, for example, the theory of evolution, modern cosmology, and physics. Also, the bulk of mythological sources of the goddess movement are ancient myths that predated the patriarchal period and, therefore, very little was written about them. Aside from the reflection of ancient understanding of these, there are adherents who also turn to contemporary scholarship and literature such as Robert Graves' The White Goddess, some of this work's interpretation of the Greek mythology such as the ritual year and annual sacrifice of the king were adopted as the basis to describe the goddess aging and rejuvenation with the seasons. Myths from ancient cultures are often reinterpreted as new evidence comes to light. Reinterpretation becomes necessary because myths from religions that included goddesses, those after the Bronze Age, including Greek and Roman mythology, are believed to have a patriarchal bias. These new interpretations by goddess movement authors and women scholars help to provide a truer mirror of the social setup of the period in which the story was written. The myth of Demeter and Persephone is one that has been reinterpreted. Also, the goddess movement highlights the legitimacy of the mythological sources from ancient matriarchal societies by citing that these were also behind key elements in Christianity, particularly in the beliefs that matriarchies fostering goddess worship influenced the attitudes of early Christians toward Mary, and that the Catholic Church was originally matriarchal with Mary Magdalene, not Peter, as its head. 
This can also be demonstrated in the devotion to female Christian figures such as the female saints, which the goddess movement views as Christian continuities of the ancient goddess worship. Theology Goddess spirituality characteristically shows diversity, no central body defines its dogma. Yet there is evolving consensus on some issues including, the goddess in relation to polytheism and monotheism, immanence, transcendence and other ways to understand the nature of the goddess. There is also the emerging agreement that the goddess fulfills the basic functions of empowering women and fostering ethical and harmonious relationships among different peoples as well as between humans, animals, and nature. Topic. One or many Topic. One question often asked is whether goddess adherents believe in one goddess or many goddesses, is goddess spirituality monotheistic or polytheistic? This is not an issue for many of those in the goddess movement, whose conceptualization of divinity is more all-encompassing. The terms, the goddess, or great goddess, may appear monotheistic because the singular noun is used. However, these terms are most commonly used as code or shorthand for one or all of the following, to refer to certain types of prehistoric goddesses, to encompass all goddesses a form of henotheism, to refer to a modern metaphoric concept of female deity, to describe a form of energy, or a process. The concept of a singular divine being with many expressions is not a new development in thought, it has been a major theme in India for many centuries, at the very least as far back as the 5th century, though hymns in the early Vedas too speak of a one goddess many goddess goddesses concept. Topic. Within or without? Topic. Another point of discussion is whether the goddess is immanent, or transcendent, or both, or something else. Starhawk speaks of the goddess as immanent infusing all of nature but sometimes also simultaneously transcendent existing independently of the material world. Many goddess authors agree and also describe goddess as, at one and the same time, imminently pantheistic and panentheistic. The former means that goddess flows into and through each individual aspect of nature each tree, blade of grass, human, animal, planet. The latter means that all exist within the goddess. Starhawk also speaks of the goddess as both a psychological symbol and manifest reality. She exists and we create her. Italics hers. Carol P. Christ, 2003, describes what she sees as similarities between goddess theology and process theology, and suggests that goddess theologians adopt more of the process viewpoint. Deity versus metaphor the theological variations that characterize the goddess movement can also be classified into two, the views that describe the goddess as a metaphor and those that consider the goddess as a deity. The former emerged from among Jewish and Christian adherents and maintains that the goddess serves as the means of talking about, imagining, or relating to the divine and this is demonstrated in the push to recover the feminine face of God based on scriptural and historical sources. On the other hand, the theology that the goddess is a deity, with importantly and unchangeably female persona, emerged out of the feminists who came from polytheistic faiths such as Hinduism, Buddhism, Native American, and traditional African religions. The goddesses in this theology are rarely understood as metaphors or images since they have distinct individual features and that worshippers can interact with their superhuman personages or symbols. Ethics. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. Although the goddess movement has no specific code of behavior, there are commonly held tenets and concepts within the movement that form a basis for ethical behavior. Those participants in goddess spirituality who define themselves as Wiccan, usually follow what is known as the Wiccan read, and it harm none, do what ye will. An, being an archaic English word understood to mean, if, or, as long as. Many also believe in the threefold law, which states that what you send or do returns three times over some traditions believe that this means it will be returned to the sender three times or in a portion three times in volume while others say it will instead be returned to the sender on three levels of being physical mental and spiritual still others postulate that the number three is symbolic meant to indicate a magnified karmic result for one's actions 
Some people in the goddess movement honor the triple goddess of maiden, mother, and crone. The maiden aspect of the goddess shows women how to be independent and strong, the mother aspect shows women how to be nurturing, and the crone aspect shows that respecting elders is important and focuses on wisdom, change, and transformation. Because the crone aspect of the goddess is understood by some to be destructive at times, some consider it to contain both positive and negative imagery and to present an ethical quandary. The Hindu goddess Kali, or Kali Ma, is often seen as an example of the crone aspect. The concept is that the corrective force in a dark age must be a righteously directed dark force. Thus, to combat the demons of ignorance, ego, anger, etc., the darker aspect manifests. Later on, even her fierce image softens in the love of her devotees. Her duality is easily reconciled with the monism of Hinduism, which claims to understand the fundamental unity of truth as being impersonal and stratified in an ego-knotted existence such as the human condition, and thus to the evil or unrighteous she is destruction personified and to the loving and moral devotee she is nothing but the love of the mother. Other goddess ethical beliefs are that one should not harm the interconnected web of life, and that peace and partnership should be the goals, rather than war and domination. According to goddess theologian Carol P. Christ the following are ethical touchstones, nurture life, walk in love and beauty, trust the knowledge that comes through the body, speak the truth about conflict, pain, and suffering, take only what you need, think about the consequences of your actions for seven generations, approach the taking of life with great restraint, practice great generosity, repair the web. Topic prehistoric cultures Topic The goddess movement draws some of its inspiration from the work of archaeologists such as Maria Gimbutas, Gimbutas, Maria, 1982 1974 The gods and goddesses of old Europe 6500 3500 BC Myths and cult images University of California Press ISBN 9780520253988 whose interpretation of artifacts excavated from old Europe points to societies of Neolithic Europe that were matristic or goddess centered worshiping a female deity of three primary aspects inspiring some neo-pagan worshipers of triple goddess Haida Gottner Abendroth, working in the 1970s to mid-1980s, called these cultures matriarchies introducing a feminist field of modern matriarchal studies she presented a theory of the transformation of prehistoric cultures in which the local goddess was primary and the male god, if any, derived his power from the goddess. In what she terms the downfall, which occurred at varying times throughout a multitude of cultures, the gods overcame the goddesses and made them subservient. Gottner Abendroth's terminology is idiosyncratic. The term matriarchy to describe these cultures has been rejected by many goddess movement scholars, especially those in North America, because it implies female domination as the reverse of the male domination present in patriarchy. These scholars make the point that such a reversal was not the case, rather these prehistoric cultures were egalitarian and had a social structure that included matrilineality, inheritance of assets and parentage traced through the maternal line. According to Rianne Eisler, cultures in which women and men shared power, and which worshipped female deities, were more peaceful than the patriarchal societies that followed. Ian Hodder's reinterpretation of Gimbutas and Mellart's works disputes the existence of matriarchal or matrifocal cultures, as do some other archaeologists and historians in this field. However, mythologist Joseph Campbell compared the importance of Gimbutas output to the historical importance of the Rosetta Stone in deciphering Egyptian hieroglyphs. Maria Gimbutas, often dubbed «grandmother of the goddess movement» in the 1990s, continues to be cited by many feminist writers, including Max Dashu. Many other scholars, including Joan Marler and Marguerite Rigoglioso, support her work. Still, Gimbutas Theories had been widely criticized as mistaken on the grounds of dating, archaeological context and topologies some archaeologists consider her goddess hypothesis implausible some regard her work as pseudo-scholarship. <laughs> Wicca Topic. Wicca regards the goddess, along with her consort the horned god, as a deity of prime importance. The earliest Wiccan publications described Wicca as a tribal goddess of the witch community, neither omnipotent nor universal. Many forms of Wicca have come to regard the goddess as a universal deity, more in line with her description in The Charge of the Goddess, a key Wiccan text. In this guise, she is the Queen of Heaven, 
Similar to Egyptian goddess Isis, she also encompasses and conceives all life, much like the Greek goddess Gaia. Much like Isis, she is held to be the summation of all other goddesses, who represent her different names and aspects across the different cultures. The goddess is often portrayed with strong lunar symbolism, drawing on various deities such as Diana, Hecate and Isis, and is often depicted as the maiden, mother and crone triad popularized by Robert Graves see Triple Goddess below. Many depictions of her also draw strongly on Celtic goddesses. Some Wiccans believe there are many goddesses, and in some forms of Wicca, notably Dianic Wicca, the goddess alone is worshipped. Some, but not all, participants in the goddess movement self-identify as witches, Wiccans or Wiccans. Other participants of the goddess movement call themselves goddessians goddessians while others identify as the more generic, pagans. Some witches, especially Dianics, attempt to trace the historical origins of their beliefs to Neolithic pre-Christian cultures, seeing Wiccanism as a distillation of a religion found at the beginning of most, if not all, cultures. They regard wise women and midwives as the first witches. Dianic witchcraft first became visible in the 1970s, alongside the writings of Zhuzhana Budapest. Her feminist interpretation of witchcraft followed a few decades after the acknowledgement of Wiccan culture by Gerald Gardner in the 1940s. Today, there are at least 800,000 individuals who consider themselves Wiccan followers or witches in North America. Gardner and Valiente advocated a proto feminist ideal of priestess authority in service to the Wiccan god and goddess. Covens in traditional Wicca i.e., those run along the lines described by Gardner and Valiente had and have pretty much equal leadership both of a priest and of a priestess, but often consider the priestess prima inter pares, first among equals according to the book A Witch's Bible, by Stuart and Janet Farrar. Doreen Valiente became known in Britain as the mother of the craft, and contributed extensively to Wicca's written tradition. She is the author of the witches. Creed, which lays out the basics of Wiccan religious belief and philosophy, including the polarity of the god and the goddess as the two great powers of nature, and the two mystical pillars of the religion. One way to characterize the central male-female divine dyad in Wicca is to say that it's a duotheistic religion with a theology based on the divine gender polarity of male and female. The existence of witchcraft as the remnants of an old pagan religion as late as the early modern age was first suggested to a wide readership by Margaret Murray's books, The Witch Cult in Western Europe, The God of the Witches 1933, and The Divine King in England. Her works have since been largely discredited by other scholars but have left a feminist legacy upon Wiccan culture. Wicca and neopaganism, and to some extent the goddess movement, were influenced by 19th-century occultism, such as the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and Romantic nature movements in which both male and female were valued and honored as sacred, in contrast to and perhaps in reaction to mainstream Christian spirituality. Such views are described, for example, in the work of Robert Graves, especially the White Goddess the origin of the neopagan triple goddess concept and Mammon and the Black Goddess. Wicca was also heavily influenced by the ideas of alchemic symbolism, which emphasized the essential complementary polarity of male and female, and that characterized that basic duality or gender polarity as a partnership of the solar male and the lunar female. In Wicca the moon is the symbol of the goddess and the sun is the symbol of the god, and the central liturgical mystery and ritual act is the great rite, or hieros gamos, which is a symbolic union of the god and the goddess, as the primal male and female powers of the cosmos. In alchemy this was known as the alchemical wedding of the sun and the moon. In a parallel vein, traditional Wicca also draws heavily upon the Western Hermetic tradition and its roots in the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, where the twin pillars of masculine and feminine divine forces are joined by a middle pillar that encompasses and transcends both male and female. These twin pillars, as they are shown in tarot decks are analogous to Valiente's depiction of the god and the goddess as the two mystical pillars. In this emphasis on the feminine as the equal and complementary polar opposite of the masculine, Wicca echoes not only Kabbalistic sources but also the polarity of yin and yang, feminine and masculine, in Taoism. The Dianic view is that separatism, in a world where gender roles were once strictly defined, is sometimes considered dangerous because it challenges what they see as patriarchal assumptions of Western culture. There are, however, Wiccan groups that do not subscribe to the male-female dualism of the divine. 
For instance, there is the case of the Budapest Dianics. Although these retained many Wiccan rituals and symbols, they only used female imagery and created a creation myth that eliminated the need for the male. While Wiccans also accept male members, the Dianics called themselves a women's religion and, thus, rejected males from their ranks. Later, in America came Starhawk, activist and author of numerous books, as an influential author, priestess in the American goddess movement. Her 1979 book, The Spiral Dance, played a large role in popularizing the goddess movement as well as modern witchcraft among committed feminists, and is considered a classic of modern paganism. Many non Dianics, as well as Starhawk, herself considered to be one of Budapest's students, who also reject monotheistic patriarchal culture, do not agree with Z's justification for separatism. Starhawk's paganism was more broadly based and also drew on the fairy tradition of witchcraft which, itself, incorporated Hawaiian, European, and Middle Eastern elements. She was initiated into the fairy tradition in California by Victor and Cora Anderson. Starhawk is one of the founders of the reclaiming tradition of witchcraft, which includes both women and men, and which honors both the god and the goddess. <laughs> Joseph Campbell. Topic. First broadcast on PBS in 1988 as a documentary interview with Bill Moyers, The Power of Myth, written by Joseph Campbell, was also released in the same year as a book created under the direction of the late Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. The Power of Myth links the image of the Earth or Mother Goddess to symbols of fertility and reproduction. For example, Campbell states that, There have been systems of religion where the mother is the prime parent, the source. We talk of Mother Earth. And in Egypt you have the Mother Heavens, the goddess Nut, who is represented as the whole heavenly sphere." Campbell continues by stating that the correlation between fertility and the goddess found its roots in agriculture. Bill Moyers, but what happened along the way to this reverence that in primitive societies was directed to the goddess figure, the great goddess, the Mother Earth what happened to that? Joseph Campbell, well that was associated primarily with agriculture and the agricultural societies. It has to do with the earth. The human woman gives birth just as the earth gives birth to the plants less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 so woman magic and earth magic are the same. They are related. And the personification of the energy that gives birth to forms and nourishes forms is properly female. It is in the agricultural world of ancient Mesopotamia, the Egyptian Nile, and in the earlier planting culture systems that the goddess is the dominant mythic form. Campbell also argues that the image of the Virgin Mary was derived from the image of Isis and her child Horus. The antique model for the Madonna, actually, is Isis with Horus at her breast. According to Joseph Campbell, Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 half the people in the world think that the metaphors of their religious traditions, for example, are facts. And the other half contends that they are not facts at all. As a result we have people who consider themselves believers because they accept metaphors as facts, and we have others who classify themselves as atheists because they think religious metaphors are lies. One of these metaphors is Eve. Campbell argues that Christianity, originally a denomination of Judaism, embraced part of the Jewish pagan culture and the rib metaphor is an example of how distant the Jewish religion was from the prehistoric religion. The worship of the mother goddess or the goddess. <laughs> Earth as goddess Topic. Many people involved in the goddess movement regard the Earth as a living goddess. For some this may be figurative, for others literal. This literal belief is similar to that proposed by Gaia hypothesis, and the goddess name Gaia is sometimes used as a synonym for the earth. Many of those in the goddess movement become involved in ecofeminism, and are concerned with environmental and ecological issues. Goddess movement adherents claim the hierarchical scheme giving humans dominion over the earth and nature has led to lack of respect and concern for the earth, and thus to what environmentalists identify as environmental crises, such as global warming. Rather than having dominion over the earth, goddess movement theorists see humans living as part of the earth environment, and also refer to earth as mother. There are sources who cite that this focus on the environment is one of the aspects that distinguishes the goddess movement with the New Age movement. 
This emerges as the former is sometimes mistaken as a subcategory of the latter due to the way the goddess movement draw from many resources that are New Age in character such as esoterica, mystery traditions, magic, astrology, divinatory techniques, and shamanism, among others. Both are also concerned with valuing oneself as inherently sacred. The goddess movement, on the other hand, is equally concerned with valuing the environment, including its human and non-human inhabitants. This attitude towards the environment is reflected in the way the movement view the concepts of femaleness, the deity, and politics. In comparison with the traditional theology where God is placed at the top of the hierarchical system, ruling over man and nature, the movement maintains that humanity and divinity must not be distinguished from nature or that earth is the body of the goddess and all beings are interconnected in the web of life. Reclaiming. Topic. Reclaiming Witchcraft is an organization of feminist modern witchcraft, aiming to combine the goddess movement with political activism in the peace and anti-nuclear movements. Reclaiming was founded in 1979, in the context of the Reclaiming Collective 1978 by two neo-pagan women of Jewish descent, Starhawk Miriam Simos and Diane Baker, in order to explore and develop feminist neo-pagan emancipatory rituals. The specific period of its founding can be traced back to the civil action during the 1970s called Diablo Canyon Protest, which opposed the construction of a nuclear plant. The reclaiming is guided by a shared principles of unity, a document that lists the core values of the tradition, personal authority, inclusivity, social and environmental justice and a recognition of intersectionality. Particularly, Starhawk contributed a strong feminist stance drawn from the influences of the Dianic Wicca and fairy tradition, which is an eclectic kind of witchcraft taught by Victor Henry Anderson. Starhawk maintained that Western societies suffer from a spiritual disease caused by the value systems of patriarchal religions, which deny the nature of reality such as the way human habitation is conditioned on ecological interrelation and anthropological interdependence, and the sexed, embodied nature of the elemental birthing power as female. Today, the organization focuses on progressive social, political, environmental and economic activism. Reclaiming integrates magic rituals and instruction to its political activism. For instance, followers performed the spiral dances during its protest meetings against the World Trade Organization and other agencies of globalization. See also References Topic. Further reading Topic. Spencer, Ida Buzanson, Donna Haleson, Catherine Clark Kroger, The Goddess Revival, A Biblical Response to God Des Spirituality, The House of Prisca and Aquila Series Eugene, O. R., W. I. P. F. and Stock, 1995 Topic. External links Topic. Matrifocus Web Magazine Archive Woman Spirit Magazine, a magazine of feminist spirituality, published between 1974 to 1984.